Okay, so we're going to have a look at solving equations. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and we're going to get started on this one. Okay, so the first one here says solve 3x plus 5 equals 17. That word solve means to find the value of the letter, what the letter represents, and in this case it's the letter x. So we've got 3x plus 5 equals 17. Now when it comes to this, we've just got to think about reversing whatever is happening to that letter there. So 3x means 3 times x, don't forget that. Okay, so 3x is the same as... 3 times x, okay? Now what we need to do is actually just think about how we're going to reverse the entire process. We've got 3 times the x and then add 5 and we get 17. Now the last thing that we did there is add the 5, so the first thing we need to do is get rid of that add 5 and reverse that process. Okay, and whatever we do to one side, we do to both sides, so we're going to get rid of 5 from the other side as well. So when we get rid of the 5 here, we have 3x left on the left, and on the right hand side of the equal sign we have the number 12. So we have 3 lots of a number equals 12, 3x equals 12. Now remember 3x means 3 times x, or times by 3, and to reverse timesing by 3 we would divide by 3. Now rather than writing divide by 3 underneath, I like to write it as a fraction, so I write divide by 3 like this. Okay, so divide both sides by 3. That cancels off our 3s on the left hand side, I'm going to just get rid of that, and then it means that we have x equals, and 12 does divide by 3 to give us a whole number, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So our final answer there is x equals 4. And what's quite nice about this topic is you can always sub it back into the top, 3 times 4 is 12, add 5 is 17, so we're happy with that, it works. Let's have a look at another question. Okay, so this question here says solve 4x minus 3 equals 21, so x is being multiplied by 4 and then 3 is being taken away. Now in order to reverse taking away 3, we would have to add 3, so we do the reverse of whatever that is there, and not forgetting to add 3 to both sides. So when we add 3, that negative 3 is gone, we have 4x equals, add 3 to the 21 is 24. And again, we've got four lots of x. This four is always stuck onto the end, so we're gonna divide by four to get, find out what one x is. Divide both sides by four, we get one x equals six. And there we go. And again, you can sub that back in. Four times six is 24, take away three is 21. Let's have a look at one more before you have a go. Okay, so two x plus nine equals 16. Now taking the same approach here, we'll take away the nine. So minus nine minus 9, and we get 2x equals, take away 9 from 16, leaves you with 7. Okay, so the first thing you might be notice, noticing here is, oh well, hold on, 7 doesn't divide by 2. Well, it does, it's just not going to give us a whole number. So we'll take the same approach again, we'll divide by 2, because we've got 2 times x here, so divide by 2, and we get x equals 7 over 2 and that's fine just to leave that as a fraction. Now obviously when it does simplify down I would advise you go for it. Okay 2 goes into 7 3 times so we have 3 and 1 half left over or you could write your answer as a decimal you could write 3.5 but it's perfectly fine for you to just leave your answer as a fraction and then write it as a mixed number uh, or simplify it in any way that you, you think is appropriate for that type of question. Okay so just obviously be thinking about that if it's not a whole number there that's absolutely fine just write it as a fraction. Okay, right, here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's four questions. Have a go at solving all of those. Pause the video there, and we'll have a go at these in a sec. Right, okay, so the first one. Take away the 2, leaves you with 3x equals 21, and then divide by 3, you get x equals 7. Onto the one below, add 6 to both sides this time, because it's negative 6 there, so add 6, so we get 2x equals 9, and dividing by 2, you get x equals 9 over 2, which just means 9 divided by 2. And that does simplify to 4.5 or 4.5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Absolutely fine for you to have written that as 4.5. So. Um, on to the next one. Add 4 to both sides. So 5x equals 30. And then divide by 5, x will equal 6. And the very last question here, take away 4 from both sides. We get 6x equals 21. And then dividing by 6 we get x equals 21 over 6. Now, I would definitely, we definitely need to do something to this one because the top and bottom there both divide by 3, so I would actually simplify it first. If we divide the top and bottom by 3, we get 7 over 2, and that simplifies, look, seven goes into, uh, sorry, 2 goes into 7 3 times, with a remainder of 1, so it's 3.5 or 3.5, okay? And there we go, that is solving equations there where we have whole numbers or integers and non-integers there with our fractions as well. Let's have a look at some more. 
Okay, so solving this, we have 3x divided by 9 equals 2. Now, whenever we've got a fraction involved, everything on the top of the fraction there is locked in by this number on the bottom. Okay, and that means divide by 9. So it's all locked in, and we need to remove this divide by 9. Now, the process to get rid of dividing by 9 is going to be to multiply by 9, okay, the opposite of dividing. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9, and that is going to remove this divide. So on the top there, um, that's not going to change. That's going to stay as 3x, okay? Remember, we're not multiplying it by 9 twice. We are just reversing the divide by 9. So on the top, we'll have 3x. And on the right now, 2 times 9 is 18. And now we can solve that quite nice and easily. We can just divide by the 3 because we have 3x. So divide by 3. And we get x equals 6. Okay, so you just got to remember when you have got a fraction in the question here to remove that denominator, we have to times both sides by whatever's on the bottom there to reverse the divide. Let's have a look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so solving 4x plus 2 all over 5 equals 6. Now, same process again, it's all locked in by this denominator which is dividing by 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is times both sides by 5 to remove that divide. Now, again, it's not going to change the top there, we're just removing a divide. So 4x plus 2 equals 6 times 5, which is 30. And now, as you can see, it looks very similar to the question that we had before. And we're just going to follow the same approach now to solve it. So it's a plus 2, so we're going to minus 2. So we take away 2 from both sides. And we get 4x equals 28. And then, just like before, dividing it by 4. And that gives us x equals 7. There we go. And there's our final answer. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. So here's two questions, have a go at both of these, pause the video there, we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, timesing both sides by 4 to start with gives us 3x plus 8 equals 5 times 4, which is 20. Take away the 8, so minus 8 from both sides, we get 3x equals 12, and then dividing by 3, we get x equals 4. And there's our final answer. Over to the next one, times both sides by 6 to start with. And we get 8x minus 2 equals 18. Now it's a negative 2 there, so we'll add 2 to get rid of that. And that gives us 8x equals 20. And then we need to divide by 8. And we get x equals 20 over 8, because 20 doesn't divide perfectly by 8. Now it does simplify, we can divide the top and bottom by 4. So we divide the top and bottom by 4, we get 5 on the top, and 2 on the bottom, and 5 over 2, 2 goes into 5 twice, with the remainder 1, so it's 2.5, or 2.5. Right, okay, so that is solving equations. Again, if you found that useful, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.